Rightio, finally back to reassembling the maxi drive 30% low range intermediate gear set for the LT230. I've given the gear set a really good clean, given inside the clean, including um, the circuit glues, grooves, making sure they're really nice and clean. Both sides ready to go. I've got my new bearings, I've given them a clean. I just clean those in petrol, I get all the uh, you know, they put a coating on them at the factory for sitting on the shelf and whatnot. I don't like running that with the oil, so I give them a thorough clean with petrol. And then uh, I just lube them with oil, with the oil I'm gonna run in the case. I don't grease bearings. It, you know, I don't run bearings in grease. Wheel bearings, I run in oil. Everything I run in oil, um, unless I have no choice, but everything I can in my setup can run in oil. And I never grease them. I always just assemble them with the oil that they're gonna run in. Um, so they're all ready to go. Uh, these particular bearings, so the bearings that came out, the Timken, they were a, thirty-three two oh five. I'm not sure if that's gonna show up there. X thirty-three two oh five is on the race. That's the standard duty Timken, nothing wrong with it, good bearing. You can get, and these come with the Ashcroft kits, and I've pulled these out of um, LT230 standard intermediate gear sets, and I've also pulled these 33205, but I'm, I prefer to run these ones. The That's the code there on the, that's the race there, and that's the cup. These are heavy duty. They're exactly the same physical dimensions. They fit, there's no issue there. They're just a higher spec for a harder working bearing. And you know, I think the LT30s, they're a really good design. They last, they cop abuse, but um, I think these bearings do cop a bit of work and there's nothing wrong with running a better bearing if we can. And I have my needle roller bearing that was the same as the one that was in there. So, like I said, they're clean, they're all open, but in, just put back in the boxes to keep them from getting all dusty and whatnot. What my approach is, I've got my circlips ready, I've got a few drifts here that I've sized up, dead blow, circlip pliers. I've got my heat gun here just so we can see a few things as we do this. So my intention is to heat the, the gear set up with a, um, just an electric heat gun. And I'm hoping that the cup will just drop in. You can freeze them, you can cool them in the fridge, whatever, you, you know, that's fine. You could heat this in an oven. Um, there's, there's various ways of doing it, you know, whatever floats your boat. I don't, I used to do the freezing and sometimes you have to. I prefer not to do it because it does introduce condensation um, when, you, when you get them out and drop them in. It's, it's just something I'm not a fan of. So I've found that if we can add a bit of heat and it's, not, and it's going to be a non-issue if we can do that, you know, um, with the aluminium, parts like the rear main bearing support plate on the LT230s. It's like 66, you know, 60 degrees Celsius and the bearing cup just drops straight in. A, a bearing cup that's at room temperature just drops straight in. So it'll be interesting to see what we have to get this to. So the first bearing I'm gonna put in here will be assembled with the race in it. You have to, you can't forget to put the race in it because you're not getting it in if you don't put it in. So, race, cup, they go like that. The tape is matching, obviously. We'll be putting that down inside the bore because this will be the one that runs in the, in the middle of the gear set down there. So we're putting it that way. Normally you would come in from this end, but we don't have that option with this setup as we've discussed. So that's the first bearing. I'll heat this up. I'll have that assembled, drop it in, and then we need to install the circlip, turn the gear set over and drift it back to make sure that the bearing cup is seated against the circlip back that way. So if we go a little bit too far, we'll drop the circlip in, in its groove, make sure it's seated properly, turn the gear set over and then just gently drift this back until it touches. And that's stage one, that's the first bearing installed. And then we've got we're, we're away from there, that's easy easy days for everything else. So we'll see that, like I said, 
You can probably see a bit of the oil in there. I try not to get oil on the outside. I want that to be a nice, clean, dry fit with, with all my bearings. This has been lubricated up, ready to go, cleaned. So that'll be the first one going in. I will just keep them away from where I'm working with the heat because I don't want them to get hot and expand and then you're chasing your tail. So I'll just keep those over there. They should, should be well enough away from the heat. So we'll do a bit of this and we'll see, see how hot it has to get for that, for that cup to drop in. I can even use one of these as just a, as a tester. Clearly that won't go in there at all. So if we can get that to go in, then I can pull that one out of there and, and drop it in. For about 70, 70 degrees average on that, I reckon that's going to be pretty close. Could probably do it in an oven, which would probably make it more uniform and, and you wouldn't have to sit there with the hair dry, but that's what I've got here at the stage. So now remember, we've got the whole bearing, the, the cup and the, the, the cone or the cup and the race, because that has to go in together um, that way. So smaller end, bigger end down, smaller end up, and taper that way. So we can just drop that in there. There we go. That's just dropped straight in. Put the sewer clip in. Now that bearing will be heating up now from the heat of the gear. So make sure that circlip seats properly. Double check that, that's fine. We'll flip it over and hopefully it won't take too much effort to drift that whole setup back so it's registered or seating against the circlip. It's a bit warm, but yeah, there's the bearing and the circlip. Hopefully you can see that in there. Hopefully the light's picking that up somewhat. Maybe if I do that, hand out the way. So obviously while it's warm, in that first instant when the bearing's cold, it's such a loose fit, you know, it could slip away, you've drifted it. But as it heats up now, like already, 
I'd say that that bearing cup is hot enough that it's now it's yep that bearing's warm so it's not gonna it shouldn't slip away so what I'll do is I'll just check it once more and make sure that it's seated against that circlip. So whilst we've got heat in it, I'll get my other circlip, drop that into the circlip groove for the outer taper roller bearing. I like to put the, um, the pinholes opposite each other, not, not stacked on top of each other. Probably doesn't make a difference, but it's just a personal thing that I do. Wiggle that in until it drops in. Come on. There we go. That's seated properly. Second bearing. See how hot this still is. Still 65 degrees. There's a little bit of mass in this thing. It's not gonna just cool off straight away. Get a lube, just double sure. And that. Make sure it's nicely lubricated. In fact, this one doesn't matter because it doesn't go in yet. But at least we know it's done. I'll put that back in there. I don't need that. Make sure I've got no oil on the outside of that. I do have a tool that I've made that's got a taper on it that seats nicely for that side. Obviously, I couldn't use that down in there because we're drifting the other side. That's why I turned it over. So this should drop in, there we go. We'll let that expand and then we can just make sure it's seated against the circlip. There's my machine spacer that came with the gear set from the manufacturers, which is Maxi Drive. So that will drop down through there. You don't have to install that first. That's the same as the two, the two parts that come out of this gear set freely are the, the spacer between the two taper rollers, the, the fixed spacer, and the outer brace, that just comes out. So they're things you don't have to deal with before or after, they can just be placed in. Whilst that's just sinking some heat into that cup, what I did was I measured, I measured the height of the bearing of the race from here to here. Sorry, probably can't see that. From, from that part of the, the race to the other side of that same part, you can measure that with micrometer accurately. And I noticed there was a variance um, in a couple of the bearings. Same brand, same part numbers. What I don't know is how well the cups are matched because you might have a bearing that's shorter there, but if they machine this different to the cup next to it, the bearings the, the measurement that matters is from this part of the cup, here the seat that's registered against the shoulder, or in our case a circlip, to this part of the race. So even though that was different on a couple, the overall might not be different. So we're not gonna know how, I don't have an accurate way of measuring that, and it has to be accurate if you're gonna try and do that, to know whether or not, like, hey, is my spacer gonna be the same sort of preload if you take the two used bearings out and you could measure those heights um, compared to your new ones, then if they're all the same, you, you know, both sides, you go, oh, well, it's probably gonna be a little bit more rolling resistance because they're new versus old, but overall stacked height, they're the same, that's great. So all we can do is assemble this, install it in the case, take our rolling resistance and compare it to the previous measurements and not only compare it to the previous measurements, see where it sits over, overall finished and decide, hey, is that within the, the specs that we want? If it's too tight, I can machine a bit off this and it may be as simple as getting some uh, wet and dry sandpaper, 
you know, maybe some six, eight, or even 1200 on a flat plate, you know, a bit of glass, and gently taking a bit off and, and checking it, and you, you know, do it multiple times so you get it right. If it's not long enough, if there's no preload on it, then you'll have to make a new one. And that's not the end of the world. Um, you know, you could have an educated guess on how much more and go to a local machine shop and they could, it's just, you know, that'll be just hollow bar, nothing special, and, and get them to, to machine it off um, to what you need. And again, if it's a little bit longer, you can fine tune it. So we'll, we'll see how that goes once we've got this assembled and we can install it in the case. I wanna make sure that's drifted down onto that circlip. So that should be all good now. I'll turn this over and we can probably put in the needle roller bearing again. While we've got heat in the gear set, it'll help us um, install the, the needle roller. So the first thing I need to do, circlip pies one of the circlets for the needle roller because again, this is the shoulder that the, the needle roller seats against. So we'll install that. We can even just give that one more tap just to make sure. Install our circlet. Always make sure those circuits are installed correctly, otherwise you will have problems. might need to put just a little bit more heat back into the gear. This pinion should expand pretty quickly because there's not a lot of mass. I mean, obviously it would reduce quickly as well, but I'll just put that over there. That'll be my drift if I need to drift it. We'll just see what that registers now. The pinion has dropped down to about 50, 55. Still got a little bit more heat in the outside here the inside yeah, it's averaging between 55 and 65 I'll put a little bit more heat into it Circuit should be able to pop in now. There we go. Three bearings installed in the intermediate gear set. All our circlets are in, we're not missing, we haven't got any circlets left over, which is always a good sign. So there's our outer cup. There's our needle roller. You can't see the circlet on the other side of the needle roller. You can see that obviously the main ingredient is when you're assembling the first taper roller bearing, which goes into the middle of the gear set, 
make sure your orientation is correct and make sure you have the race in it because you don't want to forget that and then have to drift the cup back out or get the cup back out and start again. You know, it's not the end of the world, but you know, if you can avoid it, that's great. So I'll just let this gear set cool down through just the air temp and uh, I'll, you know, I'll do, probably do another video installing it and running the new bearings in with the uh, spacer to see what our preload is and, and you know, I'll just be tackling it as it, as it comes. If it's great, great, awesome. If not, if it's too tight, I can take a bit off. If it's too light, well, I'll take an educated guess on how much I think I need to add to it and, um, you know, go and machine up a, another spacer and then we'll have an idea of the difference between this one and the longer one, if that's the way I have to go and what that does as far as how much it increases the preload on the gear set. So we'll just keep chipping away at it. Cheers.